Hey everyone, and thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another garden slash orchid adventure with me, Maria Young. Okay, so today what we are going to be talking about is some didiums and the repotting process. And since we're going to be talking about that, I'm just going to kind of take you a little bit back. I'm going to press rewind and we're going to go take you a little bit back, press rewind, you know what I mean. So we're going to go way back and I'm going to show you some footage of an actual cymbidium that I had to repot, divide, and also cut off a bunch of dead, grimy, nasty things off of it. I really wanted to showcase that orchid and kind of show you how that cymbidium is doing today and kind of share with you some of the setbacks, uh, some of the failures, and some of the things that I have undergone during this experience of trying to save my rotting cymbidium. So definitely before I go ahead and do that, I wanted to share with you a comment that I received from a friend and also a viewer by the name of Ari Castro. And I hope I did pronounce that right. And if I didn't, I truly apologize. I didn't mean to do it. Okay, so her comment states, I loved your video. The way that you call your plant, she, quick paced and with lots of information. I've been watching videos while preparing a huge repotting project, three big pots of rotting cymbidiums that I inherited from my grandma. I keep putting off this project in fear that I might kill them. They're my only living tie to my grandma. Finally, this past year, the plants are really starting to go downhill. I only got one spike in my grandma's days. There would be over 12. I think it's called spike. The branch with the flowers. So I am at the step where I am removing the bad from the good. Not one video actually says and shows which is which until yours. Thanks so much. I really want you to know how much I valued your information, especially about the rotted bulbs and the roots with the stringy stuff. I can finally move forward with this project. I think I will definitely in the end get them to bounce back. I am nervous about shocking it or burning it with the new media. We will see how it goes. Okay, Miss Ari Castro, I really want to say thank you for sharing your feedback with me. You know, a lot of times we make these videos out of passion, of course. We want to document, you know, the progress that we've had in our garden and our orchids and things of that nature. But I think above all, especially the ones that are posting information on orchids in the regards of how to grow them, how to rescue them, how to divide them, how to propagate them. Um, we're really trying to share a wealth of information with you and hopes that you won't have to go through some of the uh, trials and errors and unfortunate situations that some of us have had to endure. And it's really to offer you assistance and guidance in some of the circumstances that perhaps you have never faced before. So definitely to all of the other YouTubers that are posting helpful information for others, um, thank you guys so much. I know I have also, you know, watched a lot of these videos and they've helped me out along the way. And I've read and researched a lot of information and the information that I've learned, I definitely love to share with others because I know how it is. I know how it feels when you are kind of at a crossroad and you don't know what to do and you definitely don't want to do the wrong thing. 
So, definitely want to tell you, Miss Ari Castro, it means a lot that you would even comment and share that touching story. And I am finger crossing with all of my fingers and my toes and my heart. My heart is actually crossing too as well. And I am hoping with the sincerest of hope that your orchid definitely indeed bounces back. You make sure you keep me posted because I definitely want to know. With that being said, I want to go ahead and show you my Cymbidium Orchid and share with you the progress and show you exactly how it's doing now. Okay folks, and here they are, my wonderful divisions from one plant. I did get three plants and let's take a closer look at each one. Okay, so going back about three or four months ago, I did such a propagation on this Cymbidium right here. Oh man, did I do a number on her and I felt so bad because this orchid had actually gone through so, so much. I mean, from the rotting of so many pseudobulbs and of course the rotting of so many roots. I mean, by the time I got done with her, she was very skimpy and she was not a healthy plant at all. So what I decided to do, of course, was to also divide her. Now, unfortunately, I got overly anxious with dividing her because she wasn't that huge of a plant to begin with, especially after she had endured some rotting pseudobulbs in the past already. And so when I did divide her, I divided her up into three. And um, afterwards, I really regretted it because I started to become worried. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Cymbidium nature. Now, you guys all should know that Cymbidiums love to be grown in a crowded container, meaning with lots of pseudobulbs and of course, just really crunched up in their pot. They definitely don't like to be over potted where a pot is way too big for the cymbidium. And in all actual reality folks, what that's going to do is when you divide them so slim and so thin, it's going to cause the actual cymbidium to grow slower. So in this case, what you're doing is you're not providing it the best element for it to grow, which again, loves to be potted in an overcrowded pot, a smaller pot, and definitely not one with a whole lot of space. So indeed, I became worried. I started chomping at my nails because this was quite a nail biting experience. And then of course, somebody shared with me the information that they actually tried it before where they potted it just like mine, where they did it so thin. And they stated that all of the divisions died. Oh my gosh, why would you share such information like that? Yeah, I almost fell totally out, folks. Now, one thing that I can say and take great pride in saying is that I did follow the rules in the amount of pseudobulbs that you should have when you're doing your division. And with my divisions, I ensured that I had at least three pseudobulbs in each pot. Okay, now when I did repot these, these had some formations or some new growths that actually looked like they were going to be spikes, or at least that's what I was hoping. Well, come to find out, the spikes and also the new growth or the future suitables actually look identical. I mean, they look exactly the same. There's really no way of knowing until it gets to a certain point, and I would say maybe about two, three inches, where you are going to notice that the actual spike will split into two or remain at one with a pointed edge. Now, if it spits in two, that is your indication that it's actually going to become foliage and also future pseudobulbs. But if it stays at one spike, a pointy spike, and then starts fattening up, usually that will be your flower spike. 
and I was so hoping with all of my heart that they would be flower spice because I have never had not one single measly bloom from this cymbidium. So I can't even tell you what color it is, what the blossoms look like. So I am so, so, so anxious and I definitely wanted to see flower spikes disregarding the condition of this cymbidium. Well, I have to tell you folks, I am so very fortunate that this cymbidium was so much smarter and wiser than I was in regards to what this plant needed because to be honest with you even if it did do a flower spike there's no guarantee that it would even last more than likely it would have bud blasted because at the time and the condition of this orchid this definitely did not have enough energy to sustain a flower spike let alone blooming blossoms so definitely what that would have done to this orchid is that it would just simply have weakened it so this this actually needed some new growth to ensure the longevity and the vivaciousness of this cymbidium. And the good news is with all of these pseudobulbs or the foliage, the future pseudobulbs, this indicates that indeed, perhaps in the next blooming season, this has a possibility of actually spiking so healthy and filling my life with so many beautiful blossoms. I'm finger crossing on that, folks. So definitely, this propagation has been totally successful, as you can see, with the healthy foliage now, all of this new growth. And now we're just coming into summer season, so by the time uh, the next spring season comes about, I can only imagine how much more bigger this will be. And of course, it's gonna be producing more new growths as well. So next season, I am proclaiming and I am declaring that you will give me magnificent, beautiful cymbidium blooms. So indeed, with that being said, folks, I thank you so much for tuning in on my Cymbidium project. And folks, I'm hoping that this has been educational for you guys as well. Anyone facing any detrimental situations with Cymbidiums. And of course, this was a trial and error for me as well. So I'm definitely just ecstatic that this indeed was successful. Okay, folks, and that is it. I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another orchid adventure with me, Maria Young, and of course, stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching. Mm. Oh, that light is so bright, it's blinding me. I might have to find a better location because that light is like crazy. Mm.